In the last video, we saw three different techniques for transferring data from the server to the client. In this video, we are going to see how to implement server sent events. Of course, a long polling can be implemented by continuously calling the server from the client side. For the web sockets, I have done a video around five years ago on how to use web sockets within a Spring Boot application. So you can take a look at it. I have shown um, how it is done. The source code is also available. You can take a look at that. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to look at server sent events using Spring Boot and how we can implement them. So I'm going to show that in a Spring Boot application like we always did. I'm going to the start.spring.io. I have pre-filled some information. I'm using a Maven project. The language is Java. I'm using for now 2.7.10. I'm using the group com tech primers. Artifact is server sent event example. And we are using the jar packaging and using Java 11 for now. I have added multiple jar dependencies the Spring Reactor Web, Spring Boot Actuator Web. Uh, I'll show you why we added the flu Web Flux, which is the Spring Reactor Web in a bit. Let me generate this particular project and then we can open it in IntelliJ. So the project got opened in IntelliJ. Let me look at the files. There should be some temporary files. So we are going to create a new controller like we always did. I'm going to create a new class. Let's call it as server events controller i'm going to create this with a rest controller in spring boot i'm going to use rest request mapping which is going to be let's call this as events let's call these as server events to be precise so we are going to create a get mapping which is going to be the get api if you remember what we explained in the previous video server sent events are basically going to be using HTTP and it's going to be text event stream. So the media type I'm going to create is going to be text event stream. So I have a get mapping and I'm going to say produce media type text event stream. So this is going to produce this particular method. Whatever I'm going to create is going to produce events, right, which are going to be streamed. Now, what type of events I'm going to create? There are multiple ways in which you can create uh, text event streams in Spring Boot. So I'm going to be using the uh, server sent event using Flux, which is the web Flux, because I want to send um, these messages as a stream in a reactive manner. And that's when reactive uh, Spring Boot helps us. So I'm going to use Flux. And there is something called server sent event. This is a codec which is coming from the Spring framework itself. If you're using the Spring framework, you can definitely use server sent event so i'm going to use the same and uh, this is going to generate messages of type uh, string so i'm going to say okay this is going to generate server sent event which is going to be like generating string event type so what am i going to do uh, let's try to stream some data right i'm going to read the pom xml so i'm going to read this pom xml and i'm going to stream the contents so let's read this uh, particular path so let me go to the server path so I've copied the server path. Um, so I'll just say path dot off. So this is the path of the file. I'll just say pom.xml. This is going to read the pom.xml. And um, I'm going to do that using files.lines. This is again the streaming framework. I'm going to wrap this with the exception. And we can do that using streams right so files dot lines and then passing that the path gives us a stream of strings so basically the lines are going to be read one by one so the lines are going to be read one by one and they are just going to be a stream so we can directly stream on this particular variable i'm going to return a flux object type so what i will do is i will do a flux dot from stream because i'm going to read from an existing stream that's why i'm doing a from stream right and then we can transform it into something. I want to like filter out, uh, let's say empty lines, right? I'm going to read every line. And then I want to check if, if it is a blank, then I don't want it, right? So I'm just saying filter only non-blank rows. And then I need to convert my line into a type, which is of type server sent event of type string. So what I can do is I can do a, transformation function which is basically map right i'm getting each line and i need to transfer that into a server sent event so i'm going to say server sent event dot builder because we are going to be building 
the server sent event since server sent event is a pojo it has a builder method and let's do id so i want to create an id let's put this into a different method server sent event has multiple variables so it has an id it has event it has a retry so id is basically the unique identifier using which an individual event can be identified event is something uh, which we can say what type of event it is for example it could be a create event update event or whatever retry is the number or the duration of seconds or milliseconds after which we can retry if let's say there is a failure for example let's say the event stream has been streaming and then suddenly we encounter a failure or let's say if the server is going down we can send a retry saying that okay retry after 10 minutes or retry after a few minutes or seconds so that's why retry is there comment is something which is specific if let's say you want to add any uh, specific comment for that particular event then we can add it and finally we can type and pass any type of data so it's just a generic here but i'm going to like pass a string so i can just create a string builder so i've created a server sent event builder id is something which we can uh, generate I can create a counter so let's create a simple counter atomic integer counter new atomic integer i'll start with the counter with one and uh, i want to get the counter and also i want to increment it so i'll just say get an increment so that for the next time i can just use this uh, counter again so we need to pass the data in itself meanwhile id is complaining that it is not a string let me convert this into string dot value of and done so for the data we need to pass a string so i'm just going to pass the line directly and then event i'm going to say these are like line event finally we can pass a retry duration i'll just say duration dot of milliseconds try after let's say one second so i'm just passing it as like try try it after a few seconds right that's it and then i need to build this so that we can return this guy done i can just simplify this done now finally we have converted the line into a server sent event so server sent event is going to be the output of the stream and we can return this stream directly okay meanwhile intellij is throwing me an error so this is saying that server sent event string and it is expecting object okay so i need to convert this into a string so what i will do i'll just say accept string and we should be good here so we have converted it into a string server sent event is good so if i do if i run this particular application the so the file is going to be read very quickly and we will get the response asap right instead i want to delay this whole message so i will just say delay element so i'm saying flux please this send this message after a particular period of time so i'll just say duration dot of seconds or of milliseconds i'll just let's say uh, want to publish three messages within a second so i'm just saying delay by 300 milliseconds and read my file so that's it so we have read the file here we have read the palm xml we have a counter so that we can use it as an identifier unique identifier for each line we have been filtering all the empty rows and then we have been sending messages into a format called a server sent event which spring framework provides and we are producing the event of type event stream right so let's run this application and then see So the server is up let me go to the terminal <clears throat> i'll do a curl localhost http and it's called server hyphen events and i also want to see the header right so i'm just doing a hyphen v i'm not passing any other header because by default it's going to accept whatever is coming in so we can do a curl and then hyphen v if you want to pass and accept a text event stream you can just pass a header but i'm just not doing that so let me do a hyphen v when we do a hyphen v notice that we got a get message we got some accept star star which is what we are passing and then the content type which we got a response is which is 200 is of type text slash event stream and also notice that the transfer coding is chunked this is because 
when we send events the events are sent in the form of textual format and they are chunked so that it's efficiently sent and if you notice here the events are like coming in as is right i think it's already read uh, and it's already finished actually right let me rerun again so see here this is the unidirectional stream this is what we mean by unidirectional that basically means the client keeps on receiving data from the server right and you can see this that's what is happening the same happens in the browser as well so let me go to the browser and do localhost 8080 if i do server have an events it should again do the same thing and uh, notice that the format is having id which is the identifier which we talked about which we set and it, the counter isn't getting incremented we also send the event which is a line event and that's what is happening there is also data which is data colon and notice when we said and explain here it's going to have a data colon as a prefix right so data colon is basically the data which we got and then finally retry is basically how much uh, seconds should we wait before retrying so this is how you can use server sent events there is also one other way in which uh, you can get rid of server sent event totally so what i will do is i'll just clone this method so i'll just say get events alternative option here instead of the flux server sent event we can just do a string right so spring boot automatically sends these as like string messages the only difference is we won't have id we won't have data we won't have event it just sends the plain um, data right so i'm going to do let's say i don't want to transfer anything right so i'm just removing the map so what we are doing here we don't need the counter we are reading the file we are filtering out the empty lines and then we are just delaying and then sending the lines that's it right now let's see what happens um, so in order to make it working i need to give a different path right for this so i'll just say this is alternative right so this is an alternative technique so i'm just saying alternative let me restart the application the server is up let me go to the terminal and this time i'm going to call the alternative endpoint and notice that we just get only data colon so data colon is the prefix which is added by default for the text event stream and the data is just pushing in right it's just plain old data we didn't format anything it's just like it's reading the file line by line and then just sending it that's it so this is another alternative way of uh, doing it it's just efficient when we use server sent event because the client can understand the id it can have a retry mechanism based on the failure identifier and then it can use a retry uh, count to wait for a particular period of time and then just do an exponential back off after that this is how you can leverage server sent events in Spring Boot to create a client server communication with a unidirectional stream. Unlike web sockets, which are bi directional, server sense events are like unidirectional, and it's a protocol by default if you use text event stream. These are called as server sent events. A lot of folks use it when they want to just send the data from the server to the client. You just need to initiate the connection, and the server sends the data, and then finally it disconnects when the data is done. As always, this particular code is available in GitHub. You can take it from GitHub repository. The link for that is in the description below. If you want me to make any specific videos on Spring Boot, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.